Alright, what is up everybody? My name is Javis and today we're going to be going over the best drills that you can do as a tight end so you can be the best catching and receiving pass catcher on your team. Man, after these drills, they're going to be calling you Mr. Reliable because these drills I'm about to give you will get you right. Y'all know what the drill is. Cue intro. Welcome back to the channel for another one guys. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can give a notification every time I upload a video. If you guys like today's video, go ahead and leave a like on it. It does help out a lot. And if I could say one more thing, I'd say share this channel with your friends and your teammates so that you guys can all get better together and that you guys can work towards your goals together and hopefully my videos will be able to help you guys. All right, so the first drill is not exactly a taxing one and it's just an arm slapping drill. For this one, it'd be nice to have someone throwing it the ball it's almost necessary and then it's also necessary or at least really nice to have another person hitting your arms while you do try and catch the ball the main point of this drill is to stay focused on the ball and stay focused on keeping your arms level so that you can catch the ball even if someone is hitting you during the route so to start off you want to start about 10 yards away from your partner ready to catch the ball pumping your arms ready to go now at random points and times your partner that's throwing the ball to you is going to throw it to you and all the while your partner behind you is going to be hitting you and trying to mess you up even put their hands in front of your eyes up until the ball gets right to you and then they move it that's kind of the worst one and i always laugh when my partners do that but one of the most important things about this drill guys is to make sure that your arms are still pumping and you're acting like it's an in-game situation because in the game you really will get hit like this all while trying to catch the ball so it's important to be a big body and so try and stay big solid and focused throughout the catch because as long as you come down with the ball it doesn't matter really how much you get banged up and one of the things that will really help us catch the ball is tight ends when we have someone dragging on over the top of us is making sure we catch the ball away from our bodies and our arms are extended out towards the ball and we're not catching it with our body. Now in some situations it might be really hard because you might see the ball for just a second and you need to react really quickly so you might end up body catching it but in most situations it's really great to try and catch the ball away from the body and get that little diamond in your hands and make sure you bring the ball in all the way with those strong hands. Okay say you have a partner but you don't have another partner to hit you well an alternate to this drill is a reactionary drill for tight ends and really receivers in general or any kind of pass catchers and that's where you're turned around away from the pass catcher and they say go right as they're throwing the ball so when you turn around you have to react to wherever the ball is and try and catch it not only is this good for general reaction speed but it's also good in game when you are doing something like a curl or you're doing something like a hitch and the ball's already right on you and you have to make a reaction so you can make sure you bring in the catch despite the ball maybe being thrown a little early or exactly right on time and you just have to react to it properly and just like the other drill guys make sure that you are holding your arms out away from your body and you're holding that diamond position in your hand so you can bring in the ball safely and securely even if you are getting hit in the game one last thing I'll say for these different drills and this applies to the other catching drills as well is that make sure you are looking the ball in all the way so that if the ball is coming towards me and I'm watching it and I catch it I'm watching it hit my hands I'm watching the ball all the way to my hands I'm not looking at the ball catching and looking away no I'm looking the ball in all the way to my hands because once you look in the ball all the way to your hands it's almost like time kind of slows down or the ball slows down one of the two and you're almost making it easier on yourself by doing this so that you can make sure you secure the catch because as many times as I've seen people catch the ball look to turn up field and drop the ball because they didn't have a secure all the way it was too many to count all right so there's a garbage truck that's bagging up and of course they gotta do it right next to what I'm filming. This always happens when I'm filming guys. <sighs> it's all right. Let's wait it out. Okay, jumping into the next drills, we're gonna step away from catching for a second and we're gonna jump into more blocking drills and it'd be nice if you had a partner or a blocking bag or a lev sled, any of those would work. For me, the high school that I went to had a lev sled luckily, so I was able to utilize that in the drills. And to start off with the first drill, we're just gonna go out of our three point stance and we're gonna be drive blocking forward. When you do this, make sure you have a stable base in your three point stance. And depending on what you're planning to do, you might wanna have more or less weight on your hands. 
You don't want to have too much weight on your hands, however, because that'll lead to you leaning too far forward and you'll get shucked really quickly onto the ground. So now that you're in your three-point stance and you're coming out of it, you want to have really quick steps and you don't want to really lunge at the bag. You want to be having your feet under yourself and you want to make sure that you're striking the bag on the second step. And as you do it, you want to make sure your hips are under you and you have a big chest because that's where our power comes from. And you want to make sure that you're level and you're not able to be thrown off the block because you're leaning too far forward because if you have a big chest that'll promote you to sit back and make sure that you have as much power and stability going into your blocks. As far as hand placement goes you want to make sure that your hands are right on their nipple line and your thumbs are pointed up because if your fingers are pointed up and you're hitting the bag incorrectly with your elbows out you're not getting nearly as much power as you would if your thumbs were up and you're not going to be able to drive that guy off the line of scrimmage. The last thing I'll say about this block is that you want to make sure that your head is up because if it's down your weight is going to be forward and you're not going to be able to hold that block as well without getting shucked straight to the ground. Also you're not really going to be able to see where you're going and adapt to the situation on the field. Another drill we can do with these bags is a reach block drill. So on the reach block you want to start about in the middle of the bag or to the left or right of it on the, and you want to have the opposite stance to where you're going. So if you're starting on the right you want to have a right-handed stance but you're going left. Getting into our three-point stance we don't want as much weight on our hand as before because we are going to need to go sideways instead of forward and if your weight is on your hand you're not going to be able to move as quickly going sideways you're going to have to shift your weight and that's just wasting time after the play has started so now that we're in our three-point stance and we're ready to go we don't have as much weight on our hand as you start the drill you want to take what's called a bucket step and that's taking a side step and a little bit backwards and you're shifting your weight to the left so that you can go that direction the point of this bucket step is to make sure that we can get separation between the guy that we're supposed to block and the line of scrimmage so that we have more room to reach him because best you believe that when we take that bucket step they're immediately going to go to where we're stepping and they're going to try and not let us reach them because if they let us reach them that means they lose the drill and in the game that means they don't really get the tackle and that's a problem for defensive coordinators everywhere so as we're taking that bucket step we're making sure to lose ground just to gain width so that we can reach that d end and get that reach block in so that our running back can get upfield quickly now as we continue throughout this drill after you take that bucket step your second step is going to be upfield towards the other guy and you want to be getting wet but you don't want to cross your steps up in the least you almost don't want it to be a very quick step you want to step upfield but you only want to go over about maybe a foot it is hard to say for each person because it is individualized but for most blocking concepts you do not want to take really big steps because your feet will get caught in the air and you'll be crisscrossed and you'll have no power coming out of it when you are trying to block someone you want a stable base underneath yourself and to do that on your second step you want to make sure that you're only stepping probably six inches forward and six inches to the left it's really precise and quick movements in order to get that reach block and your feet are replacing themselves and they're chopping really quickly as far as hand placement goes when you take that bucket step and you take your second step you want to take your hands and you want to put one on the v of the chest and one on the inside shoulder so that you have a good leverage to reach them around and you want to be pressing them upfield you don't want to just be going laterally you want to press them upfield because any movement positive forward of the line of scrimmage is good movement and again it, as in all of our blocking drills that i'm going to show you today keep your hips under you and make sure that you have a big chest and your head is up so that you can't get shucked off the block because best believe if your weight is forward that defender is going to feel it and they're just going to throw you past them so that they can have a clear opening to the running back one last thing i'll say for this drill is if you have a really hard time reaching a certain person maybe because they're faster or because they have a quicker first step off the ball is that if you have trouble make sure that you're getting your head to the side of the ball that you want to be on so if you're trying to reach them to the left you want to make sure that your head is on the left side of their body and that'll help push their body out of the way and make sure that your body is getting around theirs but also you want to make sure you're still pushing up field so almost push them at a 45 degree angle up so you can make sure you're getting the block and the seal needed so that you can have that running back getting a touchdown every time so the last blocking drill that I got for you guys today is gonna to be a really simple one it's gonna be a help block drill so you want to start about halfway on the outside of either left or right side of the person or thing that you're blocking and as you get in your stance you want to make sure that you're ready to pick up that right foot and put it right back down because this is just a help block and you're letting the defensive end almost come to you you're still engaging really hard but you want to make sure that you're picking that right foot up putting it down and you're kind of only shouldering it with one arm because really this is just to help your tackle seal the DN so that you can move on to the outside linebacker for this you do not want to bring in your other arm to help
help because you want half of your body ready to take off so you can stay focused on making sure you keep your eyes on the linebacker and where he goes because if he goes outside you want to be ready to take off and go block him because that is your man primarily but your first job is to help the tackle seal off the edge so as you do this you as i said you want to pick up your right foot and put it right back down and you want to bring your second step forward into the dn and you want to have your arms with your thumb up and you only want one arm to strike and you want it right up in his chest pad you want to shuffle your feet for about two or three seconds as you work your way upfield and until that linebacker decides on where he wants to go you can stay there for a long time and i'll say this again because it is important to emphasize this for these drills is that you want to make sure your hips are under you your eyes and head are up so that you can't get shucked and your chest is broad so you're ready to have that power to produce when you do engage the d end now the last drill i got for you guys is called the shadow guarding drill so for this one you want to have probably two partners with you one for throwing the ball and one to shadow guard you and you can do this for different drills but for this one i'm showing you guys how to do simple dig and out routes so i just have my partner behind me and as we get started you want to have your quarterback either to the right or left of you depending on where you want to receive the ball from and you want to have your partner probably less than a yard behind you on either side of you and you want to have your quarterback give you a cue on when to go as they give you the cue you want to make sure you take off and both of you are taking off at the same time and your partner isn't really guarding you he's just there to be a dummy for you and depending on which way you want to break you want to throw them past you to practice that in a game when you do have a DB or a linebacker guarding you as a tight end and you want to throw them past you and throw a really big body move to make sure that you show them that you're not one to really be messed with even on the routes that they really should be able to guard you on now to get away with this we want to place our hand either on their back hip or their forward hip and you want to throw them past you so that you won't draw the ref's flag because of this it's just one of those sneaky ways to get away with throwing someone by on a route which is usually frowned upon but in this way it's really allowed because they can't really catch it most of the time and again as we go out we want to catch it with that diamond formation and look the ball all the way in just like i said in the first drill all right guys those are the drills i got for you today and if you guys enjoyed today's video go ahead leave a like again it does help the channel and if you guys enjoyed my content go ahead to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get a notification every time i upload a video make sure you guys put down in the comments if this video helped you out today as well and if there's anything you guys want to hear from me or know about or want me to make a video on go ahead put that down in the comments down below or hit me up on twitter i'm on there as well just throw me a dm or throw me a tweet i'm usually good about responding thanks guys for sticking around and i'll see you guys on the next one